Welcome back. This is the bank, the banker, and the banked. And on this part of the show, I'll be continuing my conversation with Lillian Mramba with a special look at the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the fund's activities, as well as the fund's growth plans for Kenya and the rest of Africa. I'll be remiss to avoid the biggest talking point right now, which is the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, mm -hmm. How has it affected GBF's engagement here in Kenya? Yeah, so we certainly haven't been, been spared. Um, COVID-19 is a challenge that, as a human race, that we're, we're facing, uh, and let alone sort of the financial industry. Um, I, the impact on our portfolio has sort of been moderate, um, moderate to high. The vast majority of the companies that we support, almost three quarters of our portfolio globally, um, is in agribusiness. The um, positive aspect of that, agribusinesses and supply of food, either for domestic or uh, international markets, has been considered an essential service even during the pandemic. So our companies, for the most part, have, are still in operations, but certainly not at the levels um, in which they were pre-pandemic. So we see supply chain disruptions um, in the beginning, you know, with borders cl closing and companies trying to find ways to either import seeds uh, here in Kenya or getting their products, you know, for the ones who are exporting out to, to markets had been, a, had been a challenge. And then it's just softer demand as the, as the world was facing um, uncertainties, um, the rest of the world facing uncertainties as well. We had some companies in, in non-food retail, those I, I would say have, are the ones that are most adversely um, affected. But just like uh, other lenders and other investors in the market, we really looked internally to see how we can support our companies uh, during this time, providing them with information on how to um, manage this risk and how to manage the cash flows during this period of uncertainty uh, in, in cases where it made sense for us to consider deferments. Um, we, we did that. So we, we are, we're very bullish still, again, looking at the sectors that we try and support that these will remain to be active even during the pandemic like i said we're currently deploying capital we're looking for companies to support and i think that there are still some some companies that are on the right side of this and we we want to make sure that that we are uh you know not taking sort of a broad brush um view during the pandemic and that we can, we can still be opportunistic to provide capital uh, for companies that that are that are still needed and that, and are going to rec recover quickly uh, post pandemic. Very well. Beyond Kenya, which other markets does uh, GBF operate in within Africa? We've um, historically we've been in in uh, Tanzania, in East Africa, Tanzania, Rwanda, beyond East Africa. We've in, invested in Zambia, Mozambique, Swaziland, Ghana, Sierra Leone. Um, those are the Swaziland, I think I've mentioned that as well. So those are the markets outside. I think going forward, we will focus predominantly, at least in the beginning, predominantly in East Africa, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda. Uh, once we get to a certain size, then we can we can move move out of, of the East African market into other areas, you know, like in Southern Africa and West, where we've, where we've been. Um, GBF operates within the financial services space, and uh, we've seen technology play an increasingly big role in how financial services are uh, being deployed. Uh, how does GP GBF um, bring in technology into how it does its business? Yeah, so GBF to date has been, uh, I would say, a boutique in investor. We, we haven't been a volume-driven um, investor, again, because of our model and the high, intense engagement that we have with, with our companies. Um, very much so, we've been working with a handful of companies every year. Going forward, we, we have ambitions to triple, quadruple the size of, um, of the, our operations in Africa. And so we are slowly moving into, you know, being able to do more and more volumes. And we're looking at how, what role technology can play. Certainly, we want to start incorporating that in our investment processes, in how we deploy, for example, some of the business advice that we do, if we're able to deploy that through digital electronic means that would definitely enable our reach. And the pandemic is sort of forcing us to look at some of these things earlier on. Right now, like I said, we are looking to deploy capital. We're, we're not able to meet 
companies face to face and to visit factories and all the things that we were used to. Uh, we aren't able to sit down with our owners and you know give them advice face to face. So we we'll, again, the, the pandemic is sort of um, uh, accelerating the need and importance for us to incorporate technology, and that's, that's some of the things that we're doing right now. I'll move on to my next question, which is, what role do credit guarantee schemes play in um, how GBF conducts its business? And are there existing partnerships that you may cite with regard to providing credit guarantee? Yeah, re really big role. Again, we, um, we are active in a segment of SMEs that, like I said before, many others consider too risky to invest in. Um, so we look at credit enhancements from two perspectives. One is we are raising funds from investors. Uh, a lot of our investors are development finance institutions, you know, that are funded by their own governments. But a, but a good um, a good segment of them are, you know, family-run offices, philanthropists, um, high net worth individuals uh, who need uh, need guarantee, a guarantee or a credit credit enhancement in order for them to um, be not convinced, but rather be um, incentivized to to give us the funds so that for us to invest in these markets that are still considered quite risky. So we have, uh, so that's in one area. And the second area is uh, ourselves when we are deploying capital. Uh, again, if we're, if we're looking at, uh, at a company that we think has has really high potential, but perhaps it's too early for us to engage, or they don't quite fit uh, all of our criteria. Then you know, there's been times where we've looked at how do we uh, how do we in enhance that by by deploying a guarantee in order to sort of push capital that we wouldn't have taken uh, to a company a bit earlier than than we typically would engage. Um, so we we've done that, and we are working with the with the financial institution uh, based here in Nairobi called the African Guarantee Fund. We've been in partnership with them since 2016. Again, we've, we've used them in our own operations. We're using them now as we're raising funds from investors. They've been a fantastic partner. I think it's also uh, a goal of GBF to engage in more regional um, partners like African Guarantee Fund, who have uh, who are, were aligned with. Um, in the ultimate goal of supplying uh, more capital to African SMEs, uh, they're very much sort of an African institution and they have that uh, uh, as a primary goal. So we we are very happy in where that we come into partnership with them and we see them and others as, as a big part of GBF's uh, growth story in the future. Good. Let's move on to another big talking point in business globally, and that is sustainability. Um, how does GBF interpret it, and how does it apply it in its day-to-day -day operations? Yeah, so really big, big topic. We, again, we raise funds from international investors uh, that have uh, high requirements for uh, issues around environmental and social compliance. So. With, you know, with the current fund, we worked very closely with our companies to ensure that, uh, at a minimum, we're doing no harm. We're, we're following uh, local laws and international best practices uh, when it comes to environmental and social compliance, when it comes to sustainability. Again, because we invest in the agricultural supply chain and because we support a lot of exporters, the issues of sustainability are not just a side issues. A lot of times, especially for exporters, these are strategic issues that they need to meet in order to access certain markets. Um, consumers, especially in the European markets, have these requirements anyway. And so a lot of the work that we do in helping our, our companies move towards sustainability is from a pure strategic uh, perspective. If you want to access certain markets, you need to have certain things in place. Going forward, um, the issue of sustainability is actually a core part of the new funds that we're going to be raising. Uh, with each um, opportunity that we're going to look at, we are going to uh, very much integrate how do we help the company adopt technology that's going to address sustainability? How do we help, in the example of agribusiness, how do we help small uh, access finance so they can adopt technology that helps them either to issues of climate change or be a bit more resilient 
um, deploy technology that helps them mitigate the effects of, of climate change. So we see this as a core part of our of our strategy in the next you know ten years of, of GBF. Very well, which is a very good place for me to ask you. What's the future like for GBF? What's the outlook ahead? The future is bright. The future is, is bright. We are uh, decentralizing the organization. So when we first started, we were a DC-based uh, organization that had you know, a few people like myself spread out in, in the world, um, but, but constantly looking back to headquarters. Going forward, we're fully decentralizing. Uh, we we want to have either completely autonomous or semi-autonomous um, operations in East Africa and, and other markets. We want to engage more with uh, regional players, uh, both from investor perspective, bringing them onto this journey. We, we will want to work with local philanthropists and set up angel clubs so we're able to channel even more capital uh, to local founders. Uh, and, and again, we want to grow looking at tripling or quadrupling the size uh, of the Africa operations over the next few years. So we, we're very we're very bullish. Uh, I think we're, we're going to be an African financial, uh, non-bank financial institution that, you know, many years ago, you know, had roots, roots in DC. And hopefully we're going to be supporting a lot of uh, companies that are, again, doing impactful work in, our, in, our, in, in this country and in our region. Thanks a lot, Lillian, for a very engaging, lively conversation around the work that Grassroots Business Fund is doing in Kenya and Africa. Thank you very much. It was an absolute pleasure. And it is at this point that we come to an end of this week's edition of The Bank, The Banker and The Banked, in which we shone the spotlight on the Grassroots Business Fund. Join me next week as I engage yet another player in Kenya's banking space. My name is Stephen Kemani. The Bank, the Banker and the Banked. Proudly brought to you by Africa Guarantee Fund.